Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thanks for joining. My name's Joni Young. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And today I wanna to go over um, the colors we're gonna be using for this pretty little walkway with a white picket fence and some flowers overlooking um, some beautiful turquoise water and blue sky. So first of all, I'm working on an eight by eight double primed and stretched canvas. And I've got the following colors, magenta, light blue violet, blue turquoise, aqua green turquoise, light olive green, sap green, Mars black, and titanium white. The first thing I'm gonna do is start working on the sky, then the water, then we're gonna build up to the foreground. I want to just take my water bottle and have it finely, uh, or have it set to fine mist, and then I'll just lightly spray my canvas this way, having it a little bit wet first will really help me blend my acrylics easier. Okay, so the first color we're going to be using today with a number 20 flat brush is blue turquoise. Just a little bit of that. And we're going to start on the top of the canvas, push and pull gently. side to side, all the way over, and then start working the rest of that paint out of your brush. Now when we get to about here, I want you to take a little bit of white without washing your brush off, and we're going to start overlapping, oops, overlapping to soften that blue Add some more white, pick up where we left off. And then we'll have our horizon line somewhere right about here. It's gonna be so kind of misty and blurry in the background that it's gonna blend right in with the water. I'm gonna wash my brush out. Then I'm gonna take my turquoise, the green one, and I'm gonna start right where I left off with my horizon line. Pull back and forth. We'll have this beautiful strip of turquoise water Take some white, add a little bit of that in there as well. Rinse your brush out. And the next thing we're gonna do with your clean number 20 brush we're going to take some black and a little bit of sap green. And we're going to go right under the water. We want a nice dark base to build up from for our picket fence. Our flowers and path. This is a great way to create depth, shadows and light in a painting. So all we're doing is just blocking in our colors down here, the shape of the foreground and the background. I'm going to rinse my brush out again. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do while this paint is still wet, 
I'm going to just turn my brush handle up like this and we're going to start to push gently gently pushing that painting or that paint right off the canvas to add our path I'm going to rinse your brush out and dry it off. On either side of the path, we're going to have our flower bushes, of course, and we're going to have our, our fence. Um, we're going to have some bushes behind the fence and in front of it here. So for this path, we're just going to cut in some lines diagonally this way and this way to give it sort of um, some more character and look like bricks. So just cut in like this. Wipe the excess off. And then just come this way. Don't think too much about it. I'll just go over some of these lines. Okay, I'm going to take my one inch mop brush. You want to make sure that it's dry no water and just load your brush up with a little bit of that black and green and we're going to start adding some bushes past this line right here that way we can come in with our fence And make it look like there's some foliage back here. And then we'll have some big tree up here on the side as well. So we can just go ahead and tap in some branches like this. And then we can take a little bit of our light olive green as well, a little bit of white. And start adding a little bit here and there. This will just give us a few more shades of green as well as some highlights. And we can just gently pull a little bit back here. Make it look like there's a little bit of grass. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out. Okay, I just dried this off a little bit. And now I'm going to come in with the tree trunk. I've got a number three round. And for the tree trunk, I'm going to take black, a little bit of magenta, and a little bit of sap green. And I'm gonna come up and add a thick branch that goes right off the top of the canvas. Gently push and then curve over off the right side. Twist, push, roll. letting off where you want, letting off on the amount of pressure you're using. 
to create some thinner branches. I'm going to come in with a clean brush now, some white and light olive green. And apply another layer of highlights. So the sunlight hitting some of the leaves here, making them really, really bright. So we can create a nice sense of sunlight here. I don't think about painting every leaf or over detailing, overthinking it. Just push the lid off. Just a little bit here and there. Come back in with just straight white. And add a little bit of that as well. And I'm going to take the rest that's on my brush and just gently go over this area here to make it kind of just all fade away. Okay, so I've got a clean brush. I'm going to take some sap green, a little bit of black, a little bit of uh, the light olive green as well, and we'll add a few leaves in front of some of these branches. And then with a clean brush again, take a little bit of white and magenta. Again with a number three round brush. And we'll just add a few little blobs here for some flowers on the other side of the fence, making them small because they're farther away. And then as they get near the gate, closer, a little bit closer to us, we can make them a little bit larger. We'll have some on this side as well. A little bit of white in there. I'm going to add a little bit of light blue violet. This works well as a pretty shadow. So you can choose different shades for the shadows that you want to add. And this is one that I like to use. It's just a really pretty shade of blue that I happen to love. But I always recommend you guys to Pick the colors that speak to you. Okay, so now I want to just get the color of the path down here and uh, then we'll come in and, and build up some more. 
Um, the color that I want to make is sort of a warm terracotta, so I'm going to see if we can make that. Let's just add a little bit of that white there, a little bit of light olive green, a little, little bit of magenta, and let's see if we mix these up, if we can make something similar. So if it happens to look too pink, that'll just warm it up with a little bit more of that light olive green because it's very yellowy. It's a warm shade of green. So you can often make that shade. And then if you want it to be a little richer in tone, use less white. So I'm gonna twist and roll, work that paint out of my brush. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of water Thin it out slightly and we'll just start applying right over top of those or the underpainting we have here. So all those lines that we originally added. a little bit of white and have it just disappear making it lighter and lighter and lighter back there now we'll come back over this once it's dry and add a little bit more shadow and a little bit more light on the bricks um, but first, I want to just come in and add a few little clouds up here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white with my round brush and just gently push, creating little circles. I'm going to need a little bit of water on my brush. You can tell it's a little bit too dry. So adding a little bit of water can really help. Often, the look of your clouds and help you blend that acrylic out a little better. Just a few little clouds like that. We want this painting to feel very relaxing and, and tranquil. And then I just come back and just pick a few little spots on the top where I add a little bit more white, less water. And then I'm going to take a little bit more white again and I'm going to come in here, brush over this again. I'm going to apply a second coat here of green, sap green and black with my mop brush. as well as this side. Add a little bit more 
sap, green, black, and a little bit of light olive green. Just right there. Again, make sure you're rinsing your brushes out. Okay, now that this is all dry, we can come in with a small flat brush and start coming and pulling lines down for our fence post. Um, before we pull the lines down vertically, we're going to pull a board uh, horizontally and then our gate will be slightly slanted so that we get the illusion that it's open. So the first color I'm going to be using are colors are white, black, and blue-violet. Okay, so we'll start with our post, the main post, and we'll bring it up this high. Pull down. It doesn't matter what the bottom looks like because it's going to be covered in a bush. And then there's going to be a little rounded triangle on the top. We'll just do a regular triangle now and then we'll come in after. Bring it in a little narrower towards the rest of it so it tapers slightly. And then we have the fence on the outside of the property. It's going to be a little smaller. Bring it up narrower in the center and then a little triangle again. We're going to have a board that goes right across like this that will add our fence post two. We'll have one here. Space it out. We have another one here. And so on and so on. Again, we're going to have flowers and bushes and leaves. hiding and camouflaging the bottoms of these. We won't see them. So you want to get them the same height across the top. And then we'll come in and add a line that goes out here. So from about here, pick the center of your path, go up about an inch and a half and diagonally. Nothing like too dramatic, just a little diagonal like that. Just go over this again here. And we'll start working on the gate. So we'll just make this a little bit thicker and then we'll come down And add our boards. Actually, I forgot one board, but that's easy. The one in the back. So this one here, but there's also another one. Kind of goes like 
looks like a Z or a Z. So we'll apply that. And then we'll just come back over top. And add a little bit more shadow. To these ones just to keep them separate from the boards in the back. And now we can start coming in with the rest of the fence. And we'll go, we'll line it up with how this board is here. So we'll just move over straight to here, pull all the way across. We're not going to see any of uh, the boards or the rest of the fence on the bottom. So we're not going to worry about that. It's going to be covered up by the flowers and the bushes. So now we're going to come in and add the rest of the boards here. Again, just straight up and down as best you can. Let me take a little bit of blue here with that gray. And then the next thing we're going to do is have a clean brush, same flat brush. And I'm going to add some sunlight. Just a nice bright white highlight you can just get those little boards in between use a smaller brush if you feel more comfortable And if you're finding your highlights aren't really showing up, it may be because your first base on your for your fence isn't dark enough. So oftentimes we just need to add more shadows and in order to make our highlights stand out. That's if your highlights aren't aren't working or showing up.
You can make them a little thicker than mine if you want, or thinner. I encourage you guys to really use your creativity when painting and following along. If you have an idea that comes to mind and it veers off from my tutorial, go ahead and use it. That's what our imaginations are for. It's your inner artist coming out, your creativeness flowing, and you should always go with those ideas. That's how we grow as artists, by taking those chances Okay, I'm going to go back into my light terracotta color that we made, add some more white to it, and we'll start picking up a little bit of light on this path. we can choose a few areas for light and then we'll also come in and add some shadows so I'll take blue and black Let's just bring it over here. A little bit of light olive green, a little bit of the magenta. Work out most of the paint and just have a little bit on the tip of your brush. And we can just come through here. And don't worry about trying to make everything perfectly uh, symmetrical. Remember, it's a little bit of unevenness that can add little imperfections and unevenness in your pathways, your fences, even your roof lines can add more character to your paintings. So always keep that in mind, but if you want it to look really perfect and neat and tidy. That's fine too. I'm gonna scumble along here with a leftover paint just to add some shadows. Again, light olive green, magenta, black, blue, and a bit of white. I'm gonna warm this up a little bit. Stumbling over the darkest parts along the edge here. And back over to the light. Okay, I want to add a little bit, exaggerate a little bit more of this blue. On our fence. I 
make this a little bit darker but with just the light blue violet only it'll make um, the highlights stand out a little more as well and you'll get that beautiful play on color Gonna add a little bit to the path here and there, just a light little scumble. It's fun to add a little bit of those pastel colors here and there. And add a little bit to the clouds. Just the bottom though very very lightly okay I want to add a little triangle top like this on each of these. So I'm going to go over to my little round brush and this time I'm going to start with white. So I'll show you the reverse way of approaching this. So I'll start over here first and we're just going to do just make a little triangle and apply a little bit more highlight on these fence boards as we go along. Try to make them the same size. Yeah, we'll do the same thing here. Bring it in on an angle. And then we'll go over to this side. I'm really enjoying the atmosphere we're creating in this particular piece. It's something that really appeals to me. I love tranquil cozy ocean views and vibes and a little picket fence and just a little bit more light in here peeking through these fence posts okay now we can come in with a clean brush blue a little bit of black let's take a little bit more of that blue a little bit of blue and black and we'll start over here now we're going to come inside and leave a little bit of the white we only want the white to be on the same side as the rest of our highlights
So this is just another way you can approach. You can paint them all white first, or you can paint them all uh, the dark shadow base color first, and then it works either way. And then a little bit right in here. And then if you need to, just go back in with your white for a fresh highlight like that. And take a little bit of the width off on this one. So it should be a little bit thinner. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and black. Just catch the bottom there. And then A little bit more. Shadows in here. Okay, so we can start coming in with our uh, flowers and I'm really excited for this next step. Um, I want to add some light green leaves. I'm going to go over to my uh, number three round brush again. I'm going to take some white, both of my greens. I'm just going to swirl all three colors on my brush like this. And I'm going to start by just with the tip of my brush, dab, pull, let off. Turn my brush, dab, pull, let off. And I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here so we can get kind of a rhythm going. And we've got instant big leaves now. We can even add a little swirl to some of them. Give them a little bit more of a graceful movement. So make sure you don't over highlight with your leaves here. You want to have some dark patches in between, of course, to have the depth, right? So that they look 3D. You need the contrast, you need the light and the shadows all to work. And sometimes we're just seeing the edge, just a little line because it's maybe the angle that the leaf is on. So you'll just see little edges like that.
And I'm going to take some more white now. A little bit more white. Twist and roll. Scoop it on the end of my brush like this. Don't over blend. Just sort of put it on there and leave it. It's going to mix in slightly with the other colors of green. We're just going to come in and do the same thing over on the other side. White, both greens. Works best when you take the time to load your brush. Oh, a little bit down here, just little dabs. Start getting into some more of the sap green. Pull those leaves all in different directions. But you want to have some shadow so that you feel different temperatures and light going on, different areas of light. So take some for some cooler shadows, take some of your blue turquoise, mix it in with the sap. And we can come in here and change the feel up. Change the whole feeling of it down in this area. I'm going to take a little bit of black and my greens, pull some shadows that come out. Across like this to give this a little bit more of a sense of just overall shadows and maybe some leaves are just kind of spilling over the edge onto the path. Okay, so for the most part, it's all dry except for the areas where I've got really thick layers of paint. I'll just be mindful of that and try to stay away from touching those. Um, but this is going to be my favorite part of this painting, pulling in the flowers with gorgeous magenta and some white. So we're just going to start off with just straight magenta using my number three round brush. And we'll start up over here. And we're just going to add little misshapen circles. This is our first base. This is the easiest way to paint just impressionistic flowers. You can paint these any color you want if you want yours to be more like um, we're going to have some here spilling over the edge on the other side of the fence as well. If you want to have hydrangeas, change up your colors, use blue and blues and purples. So they're all kind of facing in here towards our uh, focal point, which is this path leading out to that beautiful water.
I'm going to have a few of these flowers bunched together. Now, I'm not 100% sure what these flowers are. I'm kind of leaning towards um, peonies. I love peonies, and they just have such a showy, colorful, big flower head to them. Let's put a nice big one down here in the bottom. And we'll have some more down here. Try to go for more of a random, messier look in placement because they are pretty messy how they grow. They're not neat and tidy. Don't try to make them look like that. The next step, we're going to be using a small uh, little mop brush like this. You want it to be dry. And we're just going to stipple in lightly a little bit of white like this. So not a whole lot on your brush. You don't want any water in your brush at all. And we're just going to tap, 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 and it'll turn them a nice light pink color as you tap in. And then you can also give it a little twist and roll. There's so many different ways of approaching big flowers, small flowers. I'm just going to tap in like this first. Now they will dry a little bit darker, so the next step will be coming in with a little bit more white and adding a few little wiggly lines with my round brush. I can just go ahead and add. Oh, I picked up a little bit of the green and turquoise there, but that's fine. We'll be coming over top anyways. Once it's dry and adding some more layers. Sneak in a few more back there. Make this one just a little bit bigger. It comes out. A little bit more white. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, so I just took a moment to dry this off. I want to come in and add some brighter highlights now. I'm going to be using my number three round brush again for this. First, I'm going to take a little bit of white. And the reason being is, with this gate being open, we want to have just a little bit lighter tone, a little bit more light hitting the front of this gate. So we'll just add a thin layer here to give it some more light.
I'll just go to my flat brush and smooth it out, blend it out slightly. So I'll just even it out a little bit. back over to my round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white and light olive green again and add the last little bit of highlights. Then we'll come in and add our highlights as well on Our flowers. Okay, rinsing that brush out. We'll take a little bit of magenta and a whole lot of white. We want to focus on the top of these flowers for their bright highlights. Uh, just straight white. Now you don't have to have your paint as thick as I do. I just really enjoy using um, heavy bodied acrylics. I like the, the texture it leaves after it's dry. And it's kind of fun to apply it like this. So we'll see how we're concentrating on the tops of these. You can swirl it on if you want. Add little scoops and swirls. They're not as bright down in this area. It's a little bit more shadowed, so. I won't use as much white there. These ones up here are catching the light. Again, we're applying the highlights towards the center of the path. So the side of your flower that's facing towards the path is what you wanna highlight. And you can come in with a little bit more of the magenta for the darker areas. They would have dried if we just left them with the first base of magenta. They would have just dried looking uh, almost black. We barely noticed them because it would dry transparent and show what's underneath.
I try to make them all a little bit different in tone. You don't want them to look flat. If they all look one solid color, like this one and this one and this one, then add your highlights on the top or the side like this. And then more saturation. on the bottom part. I'm going to take a little bit of blue here and add a few shadows. This might make them look a little bit like hydrangeas, I don't know, but when I just kind of get that urge to add another color, a specific color, I go with it and whatever it ends up looking like is fine. A little, a little bit here on the path. And then I'm going to take black. I'm going to add stronger contrast and shadow down here. And we're almost finished this painting. Just some final highlights here. a little bit more of my 
light olive green. And just filter it over and brush over some of those other leaves. And slightly go over part of our tree. Blur that up a little bit as well. Take a little bit more of my blue violet and white. Okay, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was really, really fun. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. Have fun painting along, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. Feel free to join Patreon for longer tutorials, exclusive videos, extra content, uh, critiquing, and I accept requests over there as well. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all soon in the next video. Bye!